The answer is that things will never stop changing. Let's just take a moment to let that sink in. Things will never stop changing. There's probably never going to be a point in our careers as software development where things are completely stable. Hey devs, and welcome to another episode of the Goobar Podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others to do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development, working in teams, and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of connection, inspiration, and continued learning so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. This week, we're diving into the virtual mailbox and answering some questions that came my way during the past couple of weeks. We're going to be looking specifically at two questions that I think are quite relevant and that I hear pretty often. So sit back and we will be jumping right into those questions right after this. This podcast is supported by awesome listeners like you. If you enjoy the podcast and find this episode useful, please consider subscribing and leaving us a review. It helps out the show and lets me know how to best serve you all with future episodes. If you have a question or would like to suggest a future topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at goobar.io for your question or topic to possibly be featured in a future episode, just like this mailbag episode. And now let's jump in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I I hope you're doing well. I hope that you are having a a great week, and I hope you're having a great day. Today, I want to chat through a couple of questions that came my way recently. These came in through Twitter and Instagram, uh, but they're really good questions, and I think they might be relevant for a lot of listeners out there. So I wanted to share them here on the podcast and expand on them a little bit so we can hopefully all benefit a little bit from chatting through these ideas. So the first question, and I'm I'm gonna paraphrase this a little bit, uh, but, but generally the first question is something along the lines of this. You know, how many times do we have to update a project in Android? Initially, we were using Java, then Jetpack components, then Kotlin, now again, Jetpack and KTX, pretty soon we're gonna be using Jetpack Compose, when will Android development be stable? So this is a terrific question. There's a lot of pieces in there. And this is a question um, pretty specific to the world of Android development. But I think the, the answer here and this general idea is applicable to anything, especially in the tech world. So the first reason I really wanted to cover this, I think, is because we probably all feel this way at some point. We all feel this, uh, this feeling or this sense uh, of being overwhelmed. And the, the answer to the question, and this is maybe an answer that not everybody loves right away, but the, the answer is that things will never stop changing. Let's just take a moment to let that sink in. In. Things will never stop changing. There's probably never going to be a point in our careers as software development where things are completely stable. Now, whether we are building mobile apps, working in machine learning, designing websites, really anything we're doing, the tools, the frameworks, patterns, design languages, plugins, learning materials, tutorials, they will always be evolving. Now, that might not be the answer that you were hoping to hear, and I think that's completely understandable. So so why is this? Why are things never stable? Why are these things constantly changing? Well, just like we are building things with tools, the teams building the tools are also constantly working to improve those tools, to improve the things that they're handing off to other developers. You know, they want to improve just like the rest of us. They want to give us new tools. They want to give us better tools. They want to fix issues in things that they've already shipped, and they want to evolve their work just like any other developer. 
So this results in an ecosystem that is constantly in flux. But I believe these changes generally move us forward and improve the state of the art, which is a good thing, but not without its challenges. So as developers living in this world where things are always evolving, this impacts us in a few different ways. And and these impacts are really both positive and not so positive and maybe even outright negative depending on your perspective. So let's talk about uh, a few of these different things. First, let's look at the positive. You know, better tools, uh, better APIs often lead to better products over time. If uh, if things become better for us, more powerful, easier to use, maybe they provide new functionality, new features, new things available to us. Uh, this lets us build better products. This maybe lets us ship faster or ship new, more useful features. Maybe this lets us evolve more quickly to get things out to our users um, faster, more efficiently. These are all generally really positive things. And I, I imagine if we go back in time and tried writing a mobile app with assembly code, we would be really happy today that we don't have to do that. Or similarly, if we had to go back and try and build intelligent uh, machine learning algorithms into our products, we'd probably be really happy to have tools at our disposal today, like uh, TensorFlow or any number of other uh you know, machine learning as a service type of tools available for us. Now, another sort of positive, or at least I view it as a positive thing for this constantly changing environment is that things are always interesting. Because things are always changing, there's always new things for us to, to learn, to keep up on. And that pretty much guarantees that we constantly have new um, and possibly more interesting things to to explore. So I view that as a real positive because I like to be challenged. I like to try new things, to learn new things. And there's never a shortage of those. I've never worried, even having been, you know, a professional Android developer now for six or seven years, uh, I have never felt like I was getting close to understanding and uh, knowing everything about Android. And the same is uh, applicable to any other domain within software development. And the, the last positive here I'll mention, kind of piggybacking off the last one, is job security. Because things are always changing, evolving, new features are always coming out, new operating systems, all of that stuff, it means developers are going to continue to have job opportunities. There's going to be new opportunities for building new products, for updating products, for fixing old things, migrating to new technologies. Um, and again, this is a positive thing if you are a software developer looking to stay employed and looking to make money. So now that we've looked at a few of the, the, the positive aspects to an ever-changing developer ecosystem, let's look at a few ways in which the, the constant change can feel pretty negative at times. So the, the domain knowledge base is constantly growing. And what, what does that mean? That means basically the, the amount of information about a specific topic is constantly growing. There's more to know about Android today than there was 10 years ago. There's more to know today about JavaScript than there was 10 years ago. You know, the, the, oh, uh, the overall amount of information just continues to grow and grow. Uh, and this feels really overwhelming. This feels overwhelming for, you know, uh, experienced developers for so-called experts in their field, and even more so for, for newer developers. Even for experienced developers jumping into a new domain, it can feel really overwhelming. And this is something that we all feel. I certainly have felt overwhelmed before when I've tried to dabble with uh, JavaScript and web development coming from my mobile background. It's just kind of par for the course and is something to, to expect in your career as a software developer. Because the, the overall amount of information is constantly changing, it makes learning feel like an ever-moving target. It's hard to pin down a specific uh, amount of skills or knowledge that we can aim for to feel like we really know something or that we've fully grasped it. Because what we might set out to learn today could be outdated in six months. 
So instead of trying to think about a specific target, we have to evolve our thinking to more of a continuous learning model where our goal is to really uh, learn on the go and learn as we need things rather than trying to learn a specific hard uh, coded set of information. Now, because again, these things are constantly changing because of this moving target, this leaves us feeling constantly behind at times. This in turn can really kick in the imposter syndrome. You know, I again feel this way fairly frequently where, you know, you might feel like you're out of date or you might feel like you aren't up to date with the, you know, with the latest tools, or maybe you don't know enough in a particular area that you're running into in your day-to-day -day work. Again, perfectly normal, perfectly expected, but difficult to manage at times. All of this can be made worse too by, by seeing, you know, industry leaders or DevRel teams constantly talking about the new stuff. You know, every time, you know, Google releases a new thing for Android, it makes it seem like everyone is using this shiny new thing. You know, every time some new feature comes out or new uh, framework or something in JavaScript, it might feel like it's the time to jump on that. And then everyone should be using this new thing because it's new. And we kind of assume that new means better a lot of the time. And a last one I want to call out here, last challenge for us is that as all of this stuff is moving, as new things are coming out, new libraries, frameworks, as people are talking about it, this also leads to an overwhelmingly large number of learning resources out there. And that brings with it a whole nother set of challenges. Are these learning resources reliable? Are they up to date even? Do they match your learning needs? You know, maybe a, a video tutorial is out, but you prefer a blog post or maybe vice versa. Or maybe there's a code lab, but it doesn't go in depth enough and you would like a full length of video course. There's a lot of challenges there. And then finally, are, are they relevant? Are these learning materials even tackling problems similar to how you might want to apply a new tool or a new library in your particular work? Maybe there's a new framework that comes out that's really easy to use if you're building a brand new application but using it in an existing application might be really difficult. And sometimes there's not learning resources out there that cover all of those use cases for you. So there's a general theme here of all of these challenges. And that theme is one of feeling generally pretty overwhelmed at the rate of change and at the prospect of keeping up with all of the new stuff. Have you felt any of these frustrations before? I know I certainly have, and I know that at times I've struggled to stay motivated and inspired because of some of these challenges. But there are a couple of things that have really helped him manage these feelings over the years and have helped me to keep things in perspective. So I want to just chat through that uh, briefly with you to maybe help you start to overcome or better manage some of these feelings as you are moving forward in your careers. So first off, it really helps to recognize that nobody can know it all. There's no way to keep up with everything at all times. We can't keep up with all the new libraries, all the new tools, all the IDEs. There's just no way to do that. We can't try uh, every new SDK. We can't watch every conference talk. You know, once we start to take this pressure off of ourselves, we can start to think about the things that are the most relevant to us and start to free up mental space to pursue those things or to pursue hobbies or, or rest because sometimes we can fall into the trap of pursuing you know, new, new career related things, new learnings so much that we don't keep things in balance and we don't uh, pursue other interests. So this brings me then to my next tip. Not every new thing is going to be relevant to you and to your work. And even if it is, that doesn't mean that you need to use it right away. So what, is, what does this mean? Well, like I said earlier, you might come across a new tool from you know, Google or Amazon or Facebook, any, any big company, and it might promise to make certain things really easy but maybe it's only easy for a new application. And because you're building an existing application, maybe it's not relevant to you. 
or maybe uh, a new solution comes out for cross-platform development, for example. You know, Google's Flutter is an example of this. Uh, Flutter might not be relevant to you if you already have dedicated iOS and Android teams, because you're probably not going to just right away rewrite your entire application in a new framework. So just because a new thing comes out doesn't mean you need to use it or learn it right away. And let's say that something does come out and you think it might be relevant to you. That doesn't mean you have to start using it right then. Maybe you wait three months until a specific use case comes up at work or before a specific use case comes up in your your side project, your portfolio project or a freelancing project. Learning things when you need it can be a great way to to kind of keep a balance between staying up to date and being overwhelmed with all the things coming out. If you kind of take in the new things when you need them and when they're most useful, it kind of self-regulates and strikes a really good balance there for you. And for the last tip on how to stay up to date of an evolving dev ecosystem without getting discouraged is that building something that works is generally more important than which specific tools to use. So again, what does this mean a little bit for us? Uh, I personally believe, at least, that having something that works is the most important thing because typically we are building products for a client. We're building them for our customers. We're, we're freelancing and we're handing off a deliverable to somebody. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that whatever we built works and it solves real-world problems for people. So if we can do that with, you know, library A, even if library B is newer, it's usually not a big deal. So I would encourage you if you are, if you're struggling with uh, analysis paralysis, or you're feeling overwhelmed because there are newer solutions out there for problems that you're solving in a different way, don't sweat it. If you're, if your preferred solution or the solution that you already have in place solves your problem, that's perfectly fine. You know, maybe down the line, you can come back and update it if there's some benefit to you or some benefit that it could provide to your users or make your product better. But don't feel compelled to update to new solutions just because it seems like everyone else is doing it. We want to make sure we stay focused on solving the the key concern, which is usually building something and delivering something. So that wraps up uh, the, the first mailbag question here. I think this is a great question to discuss here on the podcast because it comes up all the time. Now, I wouldn't be surprised even if it gets its own episode somewhere in the future so we can go even deeper into some of these challenges and some of the tips for dealing with them. And remember, if you would like to have more about this in the future, you can send me an email at podcast at goobar.io and, and let me know or message me on social and let me know if you would like to explore this topic in more detail. So now we can jump over to our next question, which shifts gears a bit, but I think it's a fun one. And this question reads a little something like this. Hello, could you please advise me with some good project ideas for Android app development using Kotlin? I'm in my final year at university. Um, So this was an awesome question because I think any of us that have, you know, gone through some type of training course in any software development topic have likely had to build some type of portfolio project, some type of final project for a class or a capstone or something like that, maybe an internship. Uh, And there's, there's lots of ideas out there, but also sometimes it can be really hard to think of our own ideas. So I'm just gonna list out a few ideas that I thought of in response for this question. Now, to start off, because this person was in university uh, taking, you know, kind of a final course, I thought some app ideas that were university themed would be fun. So this could be something like a homework tracker to help you keep track of, you know, your assignments across various classrooms. This could include things like authentication, adding, removing assignments, adding, removing classes. So that could get some fairly complex functionality in there and be a really nice project. Similarly, you could create a study guide, maybe for a specific class, for a specific you know, subject, um, or maybe for multiple classes. And again, you could add things like authentication, uh, local databases, remote data sources. You could really start to do a lot with this. Similar to a study guide, you might come up with some type of uh, quiz app or flashcard app to help you 
study to help quiz you or maybe help quiz others and turn it into some type of social game experience. Uh, and you might create a something like a survey app for your university where, you know, the, the student body or student government maybe could walk around campus and ask people questions and get feedback on things um, to, to help the university, help improve things, kind of crowdsourcing the data in a way. Now, beyond, you know, maybe some of these university themed apps, uh, we could look at, you know, classic app ideas, classic project ideas like a weather app or a to-do app, you know, kind of a list tracker for us, or maybe something like an Instagram clone, you know, something like this, uh, any of these projects where, you know, there are good concrete examples out there in the real world that we can look to for inspiration and then try and put our own twist on. These can be really good because it kind of handles some of the design aspects for us and let us focus on just the, the coding aspect, which is sometimes really helpful when you have limited time and limited resources. Now, if you wanted to put a twist on these classics, you could kind of combine the, the classics with the university twist. You could build a campus weather app. You could create an app for your university with things like maps, info, upcoming dates, etc. kind of an info guide for your university. Or maybe you want to create something like an Instagram clone for your anniversary. Maybe you pull in specific relevant hashtags for the university, for your, for your mascot, for specific events, and make it easy to kind of explore those images and events uh, for your specific campus or your, for, for your specific region. And then uh, lastly, because people have asked me this as well, um, you know, I want to share a couple of project ideas that I built when I was going through this type of thing during university. Um, and there's and there's three that come to mind for me, three projects that I worked on. Um, these were all related to Android development at the time. And so the first was uh, I built an app to auto schedule texts to my contacts. So the idea was if I wanted to automatically send texts every night to my my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, I built an app so that it would automatically let me send a text. I could customize the message and automatically send that text to people so that I didn't have to remember um, or more really so that I didn't forget to send them. Um, another application that I built during my university time was a Texas Hold'em poker game specifically for Android tablets. So you could start to think of uh, the wide world, the different games out there and how to translate game logic and, and graphics and timing all of that into your project. And it really becomes a pretty complex project and can be pretty interesting. It's a good thing to, to include in a portfolio when looking for jobs after university. Uh, and then lastly, the last big project I work on, um, I built uh, autonomous mobile robots. So we had these little mobile robot vehicles and we used Android uh, apps basically to control these robots by sending Bluetooth signals to the motors. And these apps that were sending the signals were controlled by neural networks that we were evolving kind of in, in real time. So you could do something like that, kind of combining hardware and software and using the the wide array of sensors on the mobile device to, to do some pretty interesting things. So that's been a quick list of, you know, I don't know, 12 or so uh, app ideas here. I'm curious to hear what are your favorite project ideas? If you're going to sit down to, to create a portfolio project or create some kind of tutorial or demo, what types of ideas do you either like to learn from the most or like to create the most? You know, I'd be really interested in that, whether you want to send an email to the podcast or send a, a message to me on social media. I'm really curious to hear what all of you prefer. So we're going to wrap up here for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the mailbag episode. This is the first type of episode uh, we did like this on the podcast. Um, I, I think these were great questions and hopefully uh, a lot of people could relate to them. And, and I'm really interested to know if we should do more of these types of episodes. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please, you know, leave a review, uh, be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development, career, you know, Q and a things like that. And remember, if you have a question or a topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. And you can send those in to podcast at goobar.io for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I will catch you all in the next episode. 
Until next time, devs. <laughs>